It's always good to have a heater on. Very nice. And of course, our noise source, as background noise in the video, is washer and dryer. I know some of you will be disappointed that the vintage washer and dryer is no longer there. We gave those to someone because we already had these ones that we had bought earlier before we moved to this house. The vintage washer and dryer had come with this house and we had given them away to somebody. So. But the subject of the video is not washer and dryers, but the subject of the video is this right here. The North American model N678 um, push button 6 transistor tape recorder. You can always pause if you need a longer pausing to read. But anyway, it's ideal for students, home, office, and travel. The North American. Made in Japan. Not North America. Now, as you can see, the box is quite tattered. Yeah. You know, it's not in very good shape. It's because of where it was stored. It was stored in a basement. I got this at an estate sale, and it was there in the basement of, at that estate sale. Probably had been sitting there for quote unquote ever. But anyway, yeah. Because it was stored in a smelly, dirty basement, it, the dirtiness has managed to travel on into the case somewhat. And yes, here is the recorder. And yes, you're like, oh, yay, the recorder. Or unless your reviewer doesn't like the recorder. Oh, well, who cares? But anyway, the dust, or probably from some kind of weird insects or something, has managed to get on into the recorder a little bit. And you can see some right there, too. It was a little bit more concentrated over there earlier, I think. But I never really did try cleaning it off. I just kind of... I guess blue on it or wiped at it slightly. These aren't the reels that came with it. The reels that came with it are the two reels on the stack of those reels there. The two on the top, they're all connected together by the tape. These are the reels that came with it. And it has old recordings that were made on it by little kids. Okay, well here's the microphone case. And it's pretty cool looking. But unfortunately, the original crystal microphone that was inside, as in the words of JRC Studios on YouTube, has lost its crystal power. Not only that, but the video by JRC Studios of the Juliet rim drive reel to reel tape recorder he has, which the video is simply titled Juliet had a microphone with a different style looking case but he showed the inside which had a um, round metal cased little crystal microphone element and it's the exact same kind of crystal microphone element that was inside this one that had also gone bad. I replaced it with a different and lower quality out of whatever I had crystal microphone but once I replaced it the remote jack switch decided not to work, so I had to hold the jack in a certain way. This video is going to be over 15 minutes. I can tell because I'm taking forever to describe this. Therefore, this video may likely go on my cassette 26 account. But if it's shorter than 15 minutes, then it will go on to the cassette master account. Okay. To go look at all this, okay. Anyway, they also have some manuals with it. Let's show the manuals. Now, you may see something different here. Any of you who are used to um, rim drive tape recorders, I'm sure the real master is amongst them. He is a fan of portable rim drive reel to reel tape recorders. Um, I'm sure most of you are, would, who are familiar with them are 
used to them being four transistors because that's how most of them are but this one is six transistors yes this one actually uses a six transistor amplifier and seems and is um, better quality than a lot of rim drive tape recorders for instance the treble frequency response is pretty good and the distortion on the S is very minimal the S is record nice and clear as long as you're getting to tape to head contact and good speed but here's pictures of the recorder and the mic showing Maxil batteries loaded again I must apologize for the length of the video I'm actually so some, some of you are okay with it being long I think the main reason why it annoys me is because it takes longer to put it on Windows Movie Maker and save the file and upload the file because it's a bigger file plus the whole deal it might be longer than 15 minutes well that's not that big a deal now because I can just upload it to my cassette 26 account in that case but um, here's the specs let's go over some of the specs we know it has six transistors we know it's DC bias look at that 15 minutes for double track. Does that mean together? That, does that mean seven and one half minutes on each side, or is that? I mean, it depends on the tape length too. It doesn't say what length it's from. Even specifies. Wow, and flutter on a rim drive tape recorder says 0.7 percent. Wow, RMS, I believe. It would be WRMS. Speed, variable speed, whatever. Frequency response is 150 to 6,000 cycles a second or hertz. And of course the original microphone was crystal. Okay. Here is the schematic. I'll give a little snapshot here. Here is a snapshot of the schematic. If that was clear enough for you, but there it was. If you look closely, you'll notice something odd about the schematic, and that is that none of the component values are listed. It shows all the resistors and capacitors, but no component values. Which does remind me, I did have to replace one leaky capacitor in this unit. It wasn't fully bad, it was weak and allowing some current to flow through, giving a very weak amp which after finding it out made the amp a lot better. It also has a section on how to record music using a telephone pickup coil being shown used with a North American radio which I'm sure is also made in Japan. <laughs> what makes me laugh is when it says this fine recording was seen. I mean it's a rim drive tape recorder. It doesn't even have a level meter. A fine recording machine. And the thing also shows service stations. Yes, this will go on my cassette 26 account because I am more than certain this will be over 15 minutes long. Here is the recorder. Mr. Descriptomatic of long descriptions. What do you have to say? Again and again more of that dust stuff. Okay. It has a quote-unquote unbreakable case. I don't want to try to break it. I'm not that stupid to try to break it. If I was an idiot, maybe I'd try to break it just to see how strong it was. But it feels, see, it feels like it's pretty strong, though. I'm sure it's not unbreakable. I mean, they claim it's unbreakable and they say it's and then put plastic if it was really sturdy metal then you know it'd be more less likely to be unbreakable maybe we should go in order here here is the appearance of the recorder without reels you can observe the simple cheap rim drive method in use when when it's installed, the motor shaft always touches the take-up reel spool, allowing a notch to be formed when it's sitting there for years unused. 
when it's in play, it simply switches the motor on. It's, an adjust it's adjustable by this speed control. In rewinding, the motor goes a little faster, and the larger diameter spindle spins the other reel tube. In play, the motor runs at 1.5 volts. In rewind, the motor runs at 3 volts. The amplifier runs at 9 volts by a separate 9 volt battery. On the side, we have remote, mic, and ear. The nice golden looking um, plate instead of the common silver plate. First, even though the original microphone is where the original microphone element is bad, you'll be able to hear how it sounded when it was good. First, through the voice of a little kid recorded on this tape recorder, no doubt, probably in the 1960s. You can hear the southern accent in that recording. I just want to remind you, this is in Arkansas. Now, a man's voice from the 1960s as he does a testing one, two, three message. Hello, testing one, two, three. Hello, testing one, two, three. Now, some recordings I have made too on this recorder. And one microphone that I have that works very nicely with this recorder is this Channel Master Dynamic microphone right here. It is 5 kilo ohm impedance. It's model HM3R. This is my only 6 transistor rim drive tape recorder. Real to real wise Listen to this. That's a neat thing I discovered. Now, earlier, those weird sounds, I had recorded a toy. But anyway, what I need to show you in this video is that this reel-to-reel -reel has an unexpected, unintended feature, um, which in which it will be able to play recordings in reverse. The speed control is basically reversed around two, and a lot more dynamic in how much it changes. You press play and rewind at the same time. It sets the machine to go in reverse. Another reason why it's not turning is because the speed control set it all the way to fast. But I can adjust it. So I think that is extremely awesome. Something I don't like about this though is that for as for the uh, tape to head contact there's no there's no pad that pushes the um, the tape against the head. 
the tension is done by a springy um, pad that runs against the bottom of the reel table. And that's how it supplies tension on the tape. Now I don't mind a system like that when it comes to uh, even uh, more tension on there and having a capstan drive machine that has enough torque to drive it. But when you're having to run it from a little rim drive recorder, usually the torque on rim drives isn't that strong. And, you know, if you try to stop it, it even slows down the motor itself. So, um, same goes for Rewind. So, it's not good to have it like that. It's nicer to have a pad. So I have to have it set just right because if it's set with too much too much tension, then it will um it will it'll be a little slower on playing and harder to rewind if it's too little tension. Then the tape to head contact is not good, so it's definitely not good. Ugh, forget it. There I got it on there. Well off camera now. Okay, so you're going to hear how I recorded music on this tape. You see, some tapes do better than others on tape to head contact. Like that last type I played was a higher quality tape, and it did good on tape to head contact. This one doesn't do it as good. I got some gunk on my fingers that go onto the buttons there. All dirty now from touching that. But anyway, as you'll hear, the sound will sound unsteady in the way of like consistent treble and stuff like that because of the tape to head contact on some tapes isn't very good because of that what I just told you about having no foam pad there But as you could he hear, it wasn't nice and steady. Some other tapes, you know, of course, of better quality or more steady. Um, yeah, now that song I recorded, I, I, I don't know the name, but the song recorded, though, um, was done directly into the recorder through an attenuator. I have a nice, convenient attenuator right here. These are modern little kid recordings right here. Actually made before I replaced the um, weak capacitor in it. Speaking of replacements, I had to replace the speaker in it. The original speaker. Although it was operating, listen to this. I'm going to push on it. You hear that crackling? Yeah, it's got stuff in there, and it was making it sound extremely horrible. You can just imagine. Hear that whenever I push it. And all that stuff in the in the in between the voice coil and magnet. The sound sounded really, really bad, buzzy and scratchy, and just terrible. Because all this stuff from where it was stored. I told you earlier about the stuff that got on there, perhaps brought in by some weird insects because I don't see how dust can just magically travel through the seams of a box that's closed. As you can see, Rewind isn't the fastest in the world. See, this is a rim drive recorder where the amplifier is pretty good design, but the transport just isn't the best design. There are some rim drive recorders where the Rewind is um where the rewind is 
reinforced by an idler to make it a lot faster. And also some ones that have a better playback torque too. Mainly here though, I wish the rewind was stronger and that the motor wouldn't always be on the reel when it's in stop. Because of course after over 40 years there was a notch on it when I got it. There's no way that notch is going to go away, it's just going to have to stay there. Doesn't really seem to affect the speed bad on this one though. I'm trying to re rewind this because I have on here some recorded of a song. Because in the manual it had about how it talked about how you could record using a telephone pickup coil. I tried just that with a telephone pickup coil put up to the radio speaker to see how it would do music and it didn't come out too bad aside from that this tape also wasn't very good on the consistent tape to head contact with the head there because of the system I told you about so it's not going to be like consistent that was also whenever I had recently got it and had not yet replaced the weak capacitor show how the other crystal element that I put in there sounded. It sounds pretty terrible though. It sounds extremely tinny and just not good. So I had to see how I had to plug it in like where it's sticking out a little bit because the switch doesn't work on it. It's stuck off. I'll just have to do something about the contacts or whatever's going on. But anyway. I had to record it just at the push record on the push record and play have the volume set up all the way because this microphone just doesn't perform that well already the wires were extremely corroded inside okay, so they were corroded not from batteries but simply just for some reason the material was just corroding Now you can hear that compared with the other microphone. Same spacing is shared with this Channel Master mic. I'm now recording while using this Channel Master mic, speaking about the uh, five inches from the mic. Let's see how this sounds. Level all the way up. And. I'm now recording while using this Channel Master mic, speaking about the uh, five inches from the mic. Let's see how this sounds. Level all the way up. Um, you know, better. Of course, better on other tapes too. This tape isn't the best on this recorder. I show you how the back looks. Battery. This is one of my longer videos. Two C's and a nine volt. Standard, pretty standard supply for rim drive recorders. Goes this way. It does it goes that way. Okay, I don't want that right there. You just flathead screws. Instead of you see more commonly use Phillips head screws, but this one seems to use a lot of flathead screws and so and I'm happy about that. Except the microphone, that uses Phillips head screws. But I like flathead screws because they don't strip like Phillips head screws do. What I don't like about flathead screws, though, is that the screwdriver always slips out the side. 
Okay, this video was one of my longest videos. I hope you enjoyed this painstakingly long video. Not only painstaking because you have to watch through it, but painstaking because...